So you're good to go now. We're recording. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ben. I'll see you. I'll see you on Friday. So, oh, so um, yeah. Go ahead. I have a marketing channel. I mean, a website channel in marketing, and assemble a team there, and add some activities <laughs> with big life. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant idea, Jim. Of course, we want to get the social ledger involved here too, right? So yeah, team formation. Um, that is uh, key to that, right? We need a dedicated team. So here's a, you know, a way to say, hey, four, you know, two, not four, five, two, three is enough, I think, at this point. Um, to say, we're going to the, do the edits, and then uh, I can grant them the, the editor rights in, in Ghost, and then they can go in there and uh, bring the content over. Can we identify, you know, a leader and admin for the team? Yes, that would be ideal. That, see, that's, that's, there's just so many cases we have, you know, where we can apply this stuff. It's incredible. Um, if we have the people, right? So that's, that's my concern, you know, overall and something we should talk to, to the rest of the team. Right Maybe now. that derives from the Friday meeting on the web content. Could be. That's right. Yeah. There we can do more of the team formation, right? And uh, make clear what the roles are, you know, what, what are the functions uh, that you can do with, within that role. Yeah, let's do that. So, so that's the process overall, right? Just wanted to wrap this up here. Um, so we are in the Google Doc now, um, and uh, we have a cutoff point where we move everything into Ghost. And that's a sort of a big content migration. But it's actually not that big. You know, it's, it's not that we sit there for weeks now and uh, have to recreate the content in, in, in Ghost. That's, that's not the case. And I've already done that for some of the snippets that are in the Google Doc. Uh, I just grabbed that stuff, copied it, pasted it into, Google, into Ghost, and then did some reformatting um, in, in Markdown. And it's a very rapid process. It's really simple to do. It takes you seconds to get it over and then maybe a couple of minutes to do some of the reformatting. And it's done, basically. Um, so from there, you can do the uh, starting the, the micro-editing stuff, you know, adding visuals, adding, adding changing paragraphs, and, and the, look, the look and feel of the, the page itself, right? So that's the next step. Um, but that's, again, that's only for editors of Ghost site. Um, not everybody can go in there. Um, that's different to um, the authors. Um, and that's a whole different chapter. We haven't talked about that yet who's gonna write the blog posts on the new website. Right? It doesn't make sense to just put it out there and repeat the content that we already have. We need to add some new content to the website, right? And for this, we really need to draw in everybody in the collective who has something to say, who is an expert, who has ideas, who has uh, stuff that we wanna publish, right? Um, yeah, and those, was, those- There is a yeah. content creation uh, channel already in marketing. So uh, that needs, you know, we need to uh, organize that and get that moving as well. Right, right. Well, to me, that, that marketing piece is like, uh, that's the group of people, the editors who really say, okay, we need to push out more content or we need to coordinate the efforts, right? Um, but the other group, the authors, right, they can come from anywhere, I believe. They don't even have to be there. Um, they just say, hey, guys, uh, I've written something on my own blog. You know, I've, I've written some draft thingy. Can I give you that? Can we get started? And for those people, what I want to do ideally is give them what's called author access to Ghost. So authors cannot edit other content, right? They can only edit their own piece. Um, so it's a very safe way to say, grant them access, and then they can start putting out their content and, and save it as a draft first, right? So it's not on the website, it's not visible to the public, but uh, it's saved as a draft. And then from there, we can see, okay, here's some reviews uh, certain people make, um, looks good, you know, has to change. And then fine, push it out there. Um, and, and the reason why we want to do this is we need fresh content on the website. And this really has to happen on a weekly basis, ideally, you know, every you know, few times a week. Um, but we need good content out there. It's like um, if you look at Michel Bourbon with his peer-to-peer uh, -peer community, he has so much content on that website. It's incredible, you know, how many people actually participate and, and how many authors he has uh, assembled there, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, and I think because our topics are also, you know, in that direction and there's so much to say and so much happening in this space, it will be easy for us to find a lot of authors who are willing to share content, you know, on our website. 
I have one question about the process. Uh, are you see, were you saying that you have to add the markdown after, after you copy and paste into Ghost? Yeah, so, so um, if you take the raw text um, from, uh, say, a Google Doc, you know, it just pastes as text, as raw text into it, into Ghost. And then from there, um, you just need to add some, some headings, for example, you know, so this is a subheading, sub subheading, and then you do the markdown, you know, the, the, the dash symbol for um, the links. You have to put it in the links. Yeah, I think, I think so. Um, because I, think, they don't, they come uh, over. I, I would suggest that mark it down is a great tool for this. I mean, if we, you know, just copy and paste something from the web, web page or a Google document and paste it into Mark It Down, it uh, converts, you know, it puts in the links and converts headings and such. Cool. Uh, yeah, which is love nice it. Nice tool. It runs in the browser. We can, it's just a, it's just a page. We can run it ourselves. It's a tool we can offer people. <laughs> Super. Yeah, let's do that. So what's it called? Market. Uh, market down. If you search for market down, you'll find it. I'll uh, put it. I think I think I put it in the uh, tips tips channel. <laughs> um, but I'll put it in the uh, in the uh, chat. Sure. Yeah. Anything that helps, you know, making that process easier. Of course, um, that's cool. Um, and we have already have a lot of content from the existing website. You know, if you look at the FAQ section, you look at the, the policy stuff, you know, you look at the stuff we have created in the uh, Git book. Remember, there was a Git book a while back that still exists. Um, there's some content in there. The, the glossary, I've started that. Um, that's, that's already up and running, too, the glossary. So it's a very cool feature. So you create a web page with a glossary um, that creates... Um, a database that links to all of the pages in Ghost. Um, so anywhere you see that word popping up in a uh, in an article, it already knows that and and creates the uh, the, uh, the glossary entry. So you hover over the word and you see the the, the content uh, and you see the the description of the content. So it's a very cool feature. All right, so yeah, that's that's it about uh, you know the web publishing piece. And I think now we can go to welcome Travis here. Thank you for joining us. Hello. And Jim, do you want to introduce uh, Travis? And then we can move on to the next topic. Um, sure. Uh, Travis uh, um, developed uh, the uh, consider.it system, and um, which was used uh, uh, notably by uh, the DAO community to evaluate proposals. And uh, 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 Dibby uh, Dow, uh, which is a group I'm involved with, is, uh, uh, has employed it. And uh, it's very nice in that it breaks down the pros and cons and shows people, you know, it clearly shows people's positions, which is very good when you're investigating a problem, you know, rather than doing a final vote, you know, when you're still trying to figure out what's good and bad and um, uh, uh, you know, it gives you an immediate representation of uh, the, the sentiment of the group. Um, uh, and uh, uh, Travis has uh, uh, worked to uh, uh, do a little customization uh, of Considerate um, to match the processes of Dig Life. Um, and he's also working on an exciting new decision matrix type thing, which you might tell us a little about today. Uh, uh, one of the things that's important to us is open source uh, in day life. And uh, uh, I think, you know, uh, we can, uh, uh, you know, have an agreement or whatever. He's been uh, uh, working on making it Parts are all of this open source for some time. All of it. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're in the same position with our social ledger. We we we, we it's open source intended to be open source, but we're not making it all public yet. 
of uh, her in the same position there. Uh, yeah, it's mostly a bandwidth issue for me. <laughs> too, too many exciting things to build and design. Uh, did you want me to show them uh, what you did with Ditch Life, Dig Life or uh, well, do that? I, <laughs> I'd, love to hear, I'd love to hear from you guys too, um, who's around the table here, virtual table. Well, um, I'm, I think we're all really keen to hear what you've got here, uh, Travis. It's um, the clock's ticking. Um, we're all eager. Um, <laughs> I'd say roll it myself. That's, that's what okay. I mean. Yeah. All right. I can do that. Um, I didn't prepare a formal demo. Um, I just thought we could um, walk through some things. I, uh, Jim said that you guys were pretty serious about decision-making tools, and um, it looks like you guys have played around a little bit. Um, so I thought I could do more kind of Q&A, maybe walk through a couple things, a um, couple example sites. Um, and then Jim mentioned this. The reason <laughs> – um, I reached out to Jim uh, a little while ago because I saw on the on the uh, on your considerate site Jim had added a, a decision matrix proposal, and I was like, "Oh, I'm I'm building that right now." <laughs> and I was like, "Maybe I can maybe show it to Jim." So um, I'll I'll uh, Jim encouraged me to show it to you guys. So I'll I'll do that as well. It's all it's prototypey, um, so it doesn't it's useful, but it's it's still rough. Um, so I think that'll be kind of the the cycle. Um, just a little process thing, uh, I guess not really process, but uh, about open source. Um, I'm changing around how I do work. Um, so I'm kind of like a, I'm like an independent researcher designer. I kind of bootstrap all my stuff, all my st own stuff. Um, so consider it as really me. Um, that's kind of my, my lab um, per se. Um, and I'm switching things around. So I'm doing everything open source. I've been kind of in a scarcity mindset in the past. And I'm trying to like work on that. Um, and open sourcing is part of that. Um, so I'm, I'm open sourcing consider. I, I have everything ready to go with that, but I also need a blog. So I've been building my own blog. And so the blog has turned into this thing where I'm releasing three new things, open source and consider it. Um, this other technology I've been building called slidograms, which allows you to um, affix those little sliders with histograms to any arbitrary text in open dialogue, um, which is a third system. Um, and uh, and releasing the blog, so I'm kind of backlog trying to get all three of those things out at once. Um, and then what I'm planning on doing is having the open source, the classic considerate open source, the kind of the production level uh, system that'll be fully open source. I got that ready to go, um, but it's just the announcement is just pending, um, and I could really just open source it without an announcement at any point. You know, if anyone actually wants to contribute to it. Um, and then I have the, my lab, which is going to be another open source repository, which has a lot of these prototype code. Um, so that's kind of that's what I'm working on. I'm hoping to switch my influence from like necessarily hosting all these production level systems, but kind of focusing more on what I'm good at, which is getting new designs and ideas out there, kind of doing more, more, a little bit more on the research side of things. Um, and then hopefully integrating some of these things with other platforms. Um, so that's kind of a little, a, a bit of a shift that I'm, that I'm working towards. Um, or maybe like, maybe we'll want to contribute to the code and it'll get, um, you know, I have multiple production level systems, not, not sure yet. So it's kind of a little bit of kind of where I am in life right now. It sounds like you're a, a perfect fit for the sort of early stages of the <laughs> digital life uh, process as well. And there's a very similar <laughs> activity and version and whatever. Um, by the way, you probably, my, my heart my heart was throbbing a little bit when I was looking at your website. You know, it was kind of a little yeah. pulsing. <laughs> Great. So, um, do you want to screen share? Maybe show us something. Um, there's a button at the bottom, and it sort of makes yeah. it all. Let's see. Okay, so I can a... choose an application or just do everything. You guys seeing this? Yeah, one web one web page or one window. Cool. All right. Um, Everyone seeing this? Great. Um, and you guys can see yourself over here. Should I hide this? Um, no. Or does this not show up? It shows up, but it's a banner at the top and it doesn't get in the way from me. Okay, great. All right. So um, let's see. Um, so consider it. Uh, I think Jim gave, gave a pretty good introduction to it. Um, it's, it's meant to foster um, dialogue around what people think and why they think it. So you can get, get it easy in a, in a visual summary. Um, mm -hmm. So dialogue doesn't uh, crumble under lots of participation. 
Um, it's also meant to try to uh, uh, encourage people to look at trade-offs. Um, so on one hand, you have the pro, pro and con list, which is a very simple structure that pushes people to think about both issues. And then you have the additional thing where you can see what other people think um, are the um, pros and cons and include those in your list. And then the second major piece of consider are these, um, what we call slidergrams, um, which are these uh, histograms plus sliders um, that everyone's face goes on. Um, and that produces the visual summary of what people think. And they can click into them to see why. And that's the basic idea behind consider it. Um, so Jim mentioned the DAO. This is uh, uh, DAO's use of consider it. You can see that there's, move this stuff. There's plenty of people participating, and there's a moratorium on the DAO, which if this was integrated into their actual decision-making process, they could have prevented them getting from hacked. <laughs> um, but there are other problems with the DAO. Um, <laughs> Tra Travis, that's the first time I'm seeing this here. I mean, that, that's tremendous there. It looks like a wave of people there. I mean, each of these circles, that's another person, right? Yeah, and yeah. So if we click into this thing, and it... But, <laughs> The scalability of consider isn't the greatest, so it's a little slow to load. Um, but here's like a proposal with the full text, and then these are all people in it. Um, and I can click on any of them. Any individual probably doesn't, let's see. I hover over here, I can see who across the spectrum um, thinks this is a good pro. Um, so if I go to this person, I think it's this person, I can click on them and see, oh, this person didn't include any points. This person included one point in their list. Um, I can, I can select different groups. Um, so here I'm, I'm just highlighting the people who really disagree to understand what, what's kind of on their mind. Like why do these people disagree with the moratorium on the DAO? You know, they're recognizing, few of them are recognizing some of the pros for putting the moratorium on, but a lot of them are like a little, it looks like the top one is being suspicious of, um, oh, okay. <laughs> I think that the game theory is gonna prevent security flaw. Okay, that's a little flawed. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I can kind of get a sense of like what, what the people are thinking about at different places in the spectrum. Why are people neutral on this? Okay, I can, I can look at this. Um, you can also have more of an in-depth conversation. You can see with the DAO, there wasn't that much conversation on each of these points. I can expand them out and have a discussion on it um, if I wanted. Um, no, that's, that's, that's great, Travis, because that gives me a whole different impression now of, of this tool. Because we've tried it um, a few times um, only with a few people, right? That's a whole different picture than what oh, you yeah. have here if you have a hundred people involved, right? Or maybe yeah. a thousand people involved, you know? That, that really gives you sort of a, a wavy pattern here even, you know, like a distribution of, of, of uh, where the cur current, uh, you know, pros and cons and the decision process is. That, that's great, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty nice for when you have some concrete proposals. Um, or even like you could prioritize questions, you know, like a, a question can be a proposal to, you know, a question of, you know, one of the major questions we need to address before we do X, Y, or Z. Um, but consider it was really designed with scale um, in mind first, at least social scale, not a technological scale. Um, and it's, it's clumsy for some of the small group stuff. Um, so, so can, you, can you show them the scale we came up with for uh, Dig Life? Sure, and this was a little bit of a hack too. Um, but we had a uh, uh, Jim suggested. Here's a here's a decision making uh, proposal that was uh, motivating to me. <laughs> um, so I did a scale from okay, pop open um, from you object way over here um, to you have concerns to you have questions uh, to you support and then to you are committed to the proposal. Um, and so that was a way of trying to get some of the sociocracy um, perspective into here and a little bit of a kludge. <laughs> like you can't, see, you can't see the placements over here. And this is the only place where you can see the, um, the qualitative interpretation of the slider position. I can, I can say a little bit more about what some of the limitations of considered are, as I see, in terms of like decision making, um, to kind of cast like where it's good and where it's bad, um, if that if that seems like it would be useful. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, it's bulky. Um, in the, it's a little heavyweight. So let's say that you're um, in the initial stages of kind of threshing through like 
what is the problem exactly that we're looking at, like, and kind of starting to formulate some ideas. There's no real open-ended discussion here. The only open-ended discussion is on a pro or con point, okay? That's really bulky for, for some of, like, initial exploration of ideas. So this does not replace a forum, for example, um, which I would love to do in the future, but it's not there right now. So it's, it's clunky for the initial, like, exploration of ideas. Um, uh, it, it also doesn't have a way of asking questions. So like maybe, Jim, I'll pick on you here. Like, like maybe someone's really confused about this uh, decision matrix proposal. Like what does this mean? Like why are we doing like all those questions? Um, there, there's no way of kind of having, you know, a, a way to comment on the proposal um, directly uh, or uh, uh, ask questions of it. Um, now, <clears throat> now you could say that that's an ambiguity with the proposal for why you have a question and write it as a con point that the proposal doesn't address this question that I have, but that's, that's really kind of uh, kludgy. Um, so there's, there's some inflexibility um, in the, in the uh, tool in terms of being able to um, work through some of the earlier stages of um, decision-making. Um, and oftentimes with small groups, you don't even have to get into the formal parts. Um, though it's, I found that it's nice to be able to have some kind of ledger of sorts of decisions and seeing the backdrop of agreement and where there's some disagreements so you can go back and kind of um, understand it in the future and just kind of have, if you, if you are having conflicts, be able to look back and say, oh, hey, we actually agree on a lot of things. Um, so it's nice to have some kind of backdrop of agreement. Yeah, yeah that, that's cool, Travis, because you just mentioned an important word there, which is a kind of a ledger or a record of uh, what was actually the decision and how did you get there. Um, and I see, you know, decisions are going through certain stages, obviously, right? And you mentioned the exploration, fact-finding stuff. Um, that doesn't, you know, at that stage, I would say the group is not ready yet for making a decision, right? Mm -hmm. So you move through these stages. And, and as you said, probably it's not a good idea to introduce something like this at that early stage, right? Even yeah. mid-stage, right? But towards the end of the decision process, I think that's where, you know, a tool like this can come in. And we've also looked at tools like Lumio, right? Yep, Lumio's yeah. great. They're also designed actually to, to um, you know, go partially into the conversation, right? How did you get there? But then, but then more importantly is to say, here, let me record that. And then yep. you, you vote on these things up or down, right? And then you, you have a record of your decision, right? Yep. So similar, similar to what you do here with the consider yep. it. Yeah. Yeah. I love Lumio. I love the organization and I love, I love I like the product a lot. Um, so I'm glad you guys are looking at that, that as well. Um, I kind of look at consider it as kind of like a, uh, this version of consider it as like a, um, somewhat of a hybrid between a focus group and a survey um, in that you're getting both qualitative and quantitative uh, feedback that aggregates nicely. Um, so it aggregates, you get more qualitative feedback than you would in a, f or, or more aggregatable qualitative feedback than you do necessarily in a focus group, which is more unwieldy to, and resource intensive to like pull together. And you get quantitative data like a survey, though you have the additional, you have the, potential problem of it not being independent. Um, one of the nice things about a survey is that other people can't see the results until they submit or even just never see them. Um, whereas here you get influenced by other people. Um, so it's, it's kind of this weird dialogue, serve, like survey focus group um, kind of tool. Um, another thing um, that I don't like about this, <laughs> I, I love when I get to do demos where I get to talk about what I don't like. <laughs> um, uh, is that it, it, it's, it's a position-oriented um, dialogue. Um, so the fundamental unit is a proposal, right, which um, there's, there's no, it doesn't capture um, a problem in here, right? There's no, like, problem statements. It's just proposals. Now, there are some ways of, um, um, let, let me show you some more. Um, before I go into this critique, let me show you a couple others um, that, so the city of Seattle used it for um, dialogue around some, uh, um, contentious housing um, affordability um, dialogue <laughs> decisions that they need to make um, and you can custom it's really uh, wordy but you can um, customize consider so that these headers have quite a bit of information in them um, 
Do you guys want to nerd out of a little bit, or <laughs> should I try to keep it a little brief? No, this this is cool, Travis. Okay. Uh, especially for a larger context like uh, here. Okay, I'll nerd out a little bit then. Um, so um, here's a hypothesis: every list um, is an implicit uh, question. Every list. So a to-do list um, can be rephrased as what should I do or what should we do? Um, a list of pros and cons are what are the, what are the drawbacks? What are the um, benefits? Every list can be rephrased as a question. And that, that means that every list item can be rephrased as an answer to that question. Um, and that's where the kind of the proposal comes from. So in consider you can't customize these, um, uh, these headers and these headers can act as questions. So you could essentially have list headers that are just questions like how should we address X, Y, or Z? And that's a place where you could be um, uh, iterating on problem statements and stuff. But the support for that is really poor and considerate. Like the structure supports it, but the tool is really bad at it. Um, and um, so just with that backdrop, um, uh, Consider it still puts these, um, like the design emphasis and implementation has been on proposals or answers, um, but hasn't been sourcing problem statements uh, very well. Um, so that leads to more kind of, in some contentious issues, um, it can lead to people not being, people making proposals before they have uh, common ground around the, uh, uh, around what the problem is that they're trying to address. Um, and then a second characteristic of that, another, like ugly thing about the structure um, is the pro con list. Now the pro con list is nice because a lot of people know about it and it pushes people to think about trade offs. Um, but there's something, there's something wrong with it. Um, and that is that um, a pro and a con. So the considerate format is uh, um, kind of oriented a little more towards this positional um, dialogue, which might not be optimal for decision making. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Charles. We had that kind of discussion discussion too here. Well, my, my point was um, it sort of fosters a, a polarization. Yeah. Right? Because you either go against, or you know, you're unlikely to be in a position in the center where you have to really justify all sides. But um, it, it says, okay, no, I'm against that or I'm for that, you know. And that's the kind of conversation we want to avoid, right? Because we wanted to get everybody on the same page here and see what is really going on. Um, but, but your point with the interest group, that's, that's tremendous. I mean, that's really a complex topic, right? How do you bring this into a decision environment like that? Um, let, me, let, let me show you what I'm working on, um, which tries to, which takes that as the motivation. So this is... Before you leave here, what, uh, show one more basic thing. Show them the sort order on uh, proposals, the sort order, sort order options. Like okay, here. so the, the Democratic Washington Party was using considerate um, for participatory strategic planning, um, and this one is, is nice for sorting. There's a couple of ways in which you can uh, filter things out. So um, you can collect information from people or tag them um, on the back end uh, to create groups of people. So we can, um, we can filter to these different groups. So this is um, elected Democratic leaders. Um, if we click on this, then it filters all these resorts um, to, the, um, to them. <laughs> um, it's, it's quite primitive. Like you can't do conjunctive um, filters and that kind of stuff. But... Um, opinion filters are something that I'm very interested in um, working through. Um, you can change the sorting order. So I have this like trending thing, which is, you know, kind of what you see on like Reddit and that kind of thing, which weighs recency and um, amount of positive votes. Um, uh, and that one works pretty well, but um, you could, you could change, you can sort it by newest, um, you know, however you want to sort it. Well, I guess not however you want to sort it, but <laughs> Um, it's easy to add new ones. Um, Jim, was there something else you wanted, you wanted me to show you or that's, show folks? Or? That's good. I mean, you know, it, uh, it's, uh, I, I find that to be very useful because the total score is not necessarily meaningful at all. 
uh, uh, other things sometimes are more meaningful to look at. Here's, here's some interesting, a couple of sort orders that are kind of interesting, um, where you can sort by unity or difference, um, which are basically the same metric, but it's like looking at the standard deviation of the opinions. Um, so um, if you want to see, okay, where are we like most divided? These are the ones we're most divided. Um, and that might be, you know, important to surface at a, at a meeting or something like that to like talk through something. We have higher bandwidth uh, communication tool. Um, so you kind of look at some of the, these like sliders, like, um, like you talk about them for decision support, um, but I like them as just kind of like a little gauge, like a little gut reaction kind of gauge. It's just like, oh, I'm like over here. Like day to day, I change where I am on the sliders. Like it's just like, I'm just like sliding, you know, all over a place. And it's, it's kind of like, okay, like it's like a conversation starter. So I, I, I tend to not look at it as like, um, oh, like I'm supporting this or I'm totally against this thing. In fact, I like to change the slide. I've been, I've been more of a fan of the um, priority sliders. Um, than, than uh, like the supporter or opposed sliders because those, those seem like they're really forceful. And oftentimes I find consider it to be useful just for like getting like a sense of where people are so you can kind of have a conversation to um, uh, get an alignment. Yeah, I think that's, that's exactly it, Travis, you know, to see where people are. You know, that kind of snapshot thing that you get out of this is exactly what the purpose is. Um, and I can see that there's a certain dynamic aspect you don't even want to bring in here um, because you, you have to freeze the context at some point, right? And say, this is the story as of now, right? Now, let's hear it from you guys and see where, where you think you stand on this story, right? You can't change the story at this point because if you do, then suddenly that whole picture gets mushy because, you know, some people might change it and not and you don't go back in there a second time, right? And all these other things come up. Yeah. But as, as a snapshot, I think this is tremendous. What you've done there is really a great, great tool there. Yeah. Thank you. No, I know. I, you know, I really like the way that you know, I get the email updates when there's been activity that I'm watching, uh, and uh, in co combination with the Slack and such, uh, uh, using links to individual items in the context of the social ledger <laughs> uh, is uh, uh, is very powerful. You know, if somebody clicks and they immediately see everyone's position and the arguments. Um, uh, so even outside the, the shell, uh, the individual items are very useful in the social ledger. I made this, I made this thing, um, for DAO people. Oh, it's working. Good. Okay. So this is like a, a discourse forum. Um, okay. Please work right now. Okay, cool. Um, uh, it can, uh, one box these, uh, um, embed those results. And this is a link to consider it. Um, Slack does it. Slack has a, um, this could theoretically work on Slack, but Slack has a limited set of sites that they've whitelisted to be able to support the, um, this type of, this um, particular web protocol. Um, uh, so it's not in there, but I, I would love to have more um, integrations with other things, but again, those are just more things to build. <laughs> so it's harder to, harder to do. I, I, just creating an RSS feed of consider proposals would be great. And then uh, Slack right. could, Slack has native support for RSS feeds. Uh, that would probably be the, the route to go for that kind of integration. But Yes, I mean, that's part of our plan, too, is to, to publish as much as possible what we do inside the collective, right? put it out on our website and, and showcase, present some of the stuff. We're doing that with uh, some of the work we're doing. But something like the decisions we're taking, that's great, too. You know, if you can embed that, like what you had here on a discourse forum, that's great because we also use discourse. You can, you, can, you can embed it in arbitrary HTML. So you can create any, any web page that you want. You can go ahead and pop, pop it in there and write stuff around it. That allows you to do more, like one of the things I've really, <laughs> um, oh, so exciting. Um, <laughs> I, like, I, like I'm really motivated by listening. Like I, want, I, I think that the web has been designed to speak into fairly well, but very poor at listening through. Um, and I think that that's one of the main challenges to scalability so that we can have organizations that can actually have the capacity to listen to what large groups of people think. Um, and so consider it was like a first pass at one approach to that. Um, but really what you, you also need to have um, a community or decision makers able to summarize like an executive summary of what they're hearing and why they're hearing it. And so if you can actually craft like um, a narrative around the, results and then kind of bolster it with people's opinions and people can click in and see the raw material and the results. That's kind of like the next stage that I'd love to be able to get to um, for creating uh, 
social listening or something. I don't know what to call it. That's great. Um, that, that's an important point too, what you just mentioned, uh, Travis, which is narratives. Um, there's this guy from Deloitte, uh, his name is John Hagel, and he distinguishes between stories and narratives, right? And your tool like aligns with that idea very well, right? Because of a lot of these individual stories that people bring into this decision, right? And out of these hundreds and thousands of stories become these, you know, come these narratives, right? And you, you have a way actually to visualize narratives, right? I haven't seen this anywhere um, where you can actually see where all these stories come together and where they align with each other. Mm -hmm. That's a tremendous benefit from this. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a, it, that reminds me that there's, a, there's another interesting uh, thing here with, with considerate. If I go into one of these things, I have no idea if, well, I'm going to go into this one because I like it more. Um, there's, there's, there's a missing piece, I think, in a people's opinion. So an opinion, we call like a slider drag. So that's like what people think and then why. It's a collection of pros and cons in here. But really, the, there's missing uh, a narrative that weaves things together for that person, uh, which are like the position statements, which are really important for small groups. Because it's, a, it's, a, it's this like scale where as you have more and more people participating, um, an individual opinion matters less and less, relatively speaking. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is like really geared towards that kind of bigger end. But the smaller one, you really care about what each individual like thinks uh, on, a, on a narrative level. And even at the, at the big level, at the, at the large scale, individual, like you can, a narrative still has a lot of power. Um, and so I'd love to be able to have, to have a third part of this be like at a summary statement that weaves together, you know, how you came to this conclusion given what you're expressing. Um, that's a little bit of a, mm -hmm. that's cool. Like it's where you can like click on here and like see what they, what they think, or maybe like scroll through. I don't know. Um, there's so much to design. It's crazy. Have you yeah, thought, thought about a Lumio plugin? I haven't thought about it. No. I mean, I honestly, integrations scare me just because it's like, it's hard to maintain. Then people can switch APIs and stuff. Um, right. and like, you know, you want to have like communities that are actually wanting that stuff so that you can have a backdrop to design against. Um, but hopefully that, hopefully integration will take off if I open source it, but um, who knows, or maybe I'll, maybe no one will contribute. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think a tool built for um, Mattermost, I think that's a, integration with our project would be tremendous. Yeah. Um, well, that's why he's here. That's my my intention. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, uh, this uh, uh, I I hope to, uh, to integrate it with uh, slash dig light, and uh, 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 it, it, uh, 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 but uh, you know, uh, it's an experiment like everything else, and. Uh, there's a smile on Joachim's face. It's not an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It's real. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Come I like, on, I like come on. experiments are real. Experiments are the only way to live. Right. Permanent experiment. <laughs> well, yeah, I would love to talk more about that, Travis, um, and, and where are you going in the future with this. Yeah. Um, we're, we're coming up here at the top of the hour. Um, you mentioned something of this uh, the matrix. Can I, can I show this thing quick? <laughs> try, to, try to get to it quick. Um, okay, so... Uh, this basically, it doesn't have really any dialogue. This is an example. Um, this is some cryptocurrency people. Um, there's very few people using this, so don't, don't share this thing, actually. This is prototype. You can see from the site that it's just like, it's nothing really official. You can go here and you actually see, actually, if you go to this, um, you can log in and see everyone and see people's mouses uh, moving around. Um, but, here, but the idea behind this uh, tool is that you could articulate um, a decision or like a problem. Okay, so we're help, we're, we're evaluating investment opportunities, but I can, I can have anything there. Um, you can define who, who, who is participating here. Um, and, uh, and then you can uh, add criteria for making a decision on whatever this problem is that you're trying to solve. Um, and then you can add options along the, um, the axis here. So I can let's say add another What's a, what's a recent cryptocurrency like OX or something like that, I think is one. Um, and then I can, um, along each of these criteria, I can judge it. So I can go ahead and put myself on here uh, where I want. Anyone can put themselves on there. Um, this is kind of replicating um, a, 
um, you know, like making a spreadsheet with like uh, a rubric of criteria and then having values. But the thing is that here, it, with that approach, it's really hard to factor in other people's opinions uh, because you have one value in that spreadsheet. Um, so you can think about this as like that kind of rubric spreadsheet where each cell uh, contains a, sli a, a slidogram with other people's opinions on it. Um, and those, those are weights that they think. So, so these people are weighing um, this criteria um, with, um, on this, the basic attention token. Um, and, uh, and you can weigh your um, criteria. So you can see that there's, dif there's differences in what people value. So Ben here um, doesn't think that real world use potential is very important for whether to invest in a token. Um, whereas myself and Pierre think that it's pretty important. Um, and so that can help surface, like imagine you're going in the decision making process around something you can kind of collaboratively define what the problem is. Um, that you can uh, source what some criteria are, weigh them, have discussions about whether, you know, try to understand each other's perspectives on where your differences lie in the criteria. Um, and then you can start to rate, um, add in options and start rate, uh, rating them along those criteria. And then there's an over, can you guys see this down at the bottom, this overall score? Um, this is automatically calculated based on your, um, uh, based on the criteria, weight, and the uh, evaluation for that particular one. Um, so this is an automatically um, changing, updating. This is really slow, guys. I'm sorry, this prototype code. Um, so this, I can't actually drag these, but these are, our positions on there are based on um, the weight and the, um, the ratings. And what I want to be able to do here is also do a lot of these opinion filters. Um, so I should be able to change like, okay, whose criteria matters? Okay, so, so maybe, maybe only one person's criteria actually matters in the end, but you're surfacing a lot of people's opinions in order to be able to have good conversations. But ultimately, there's one person who's making the decision, their criteria will be applied, or their criteria weights will be applied. Um, or maybe you really only care, maybe there's only a couple of people whose opinions on the ratings you care about, um, or you just want to like, slice and dice the data in a way like I was showing you with um, the Washington Democrats site where you say, okay, show me all the people who are engineers. What do they think? Um, uh, and, and so forth. So you can go ahead and like, okay, whose matter, whose opinion matters here? Okay. Uh, this is really lame too, but maybe only Pierre's opinion matters right now. <laughs> this is, I don't even know if this works right now. <laughs> um, theoretically you can click on Pierre and then you can just see. Um, so it's just his weights here. Uh, just his ratings here um, and I can go ahead and inspect that and uh, I can see that he thinks Ethereum is the best investment right now. Um, anyway, you can um, create a, um, any kind of, so here's a blank slate. Um, you can change this, change this and add criteria, blah, 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 add options. Anyway, so um, what, this, this is the state where I'm at now with this prototype where it's just doing, uh, it's just kind of like a decision matrix. Uh, but what I want to be able to do is um, kind of a next layer after, there's a lot to fix with this layer after I, I a lot of things I'm, I'm working on with that. But like, um, I want to make it so you can have more um, qualitative discussion around the different um, items. So you can have a, you can open up a criteria and go through all the different, uh, or you can like, how do you apply this criteria? Um, <laughs> Hello, someone who opened this up, <laughs> the undercover inventor. Um, so you can, um, so this is all live updating, by the way, too. Um, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, so I want to have more of like a focused dialogue around a particular um, option or a particular criteria that's more kind of considerate style where you can surface, um, you can surface maybe pros and cons, maybe just questions. You kind of dive in if you want. And so then this, this matrix becomes... Um, like the equivalent of um, this page, the home page, you can go into one of them and have more of a focus around it. Um, and so I want to have that same kind of uh, approach with this. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at with this, uh, with this prototype. Um, so anyway, uh, I want to show you that because uh, I was excited uh, by Jim um, wanting the decision matrix. <laughs> And this is great, Travis. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, and what I can see is, you know, I don't know if you've looked at our website, um, but our motto is uh, technology we trust, right, for, for a world we want. Um, it's kind of our tagline there. 
And I can see a tool like this would really help us to establish that line, right? So saying, what kind of technologies are we trusting? What is our thinking? What are, what are our decision criteria, right, um, that allow us to say, yes, we do trust that kind of technology. So there's a, there's a whole thinking now going on in terms of an evaluation and certification process we want to go through, right, with the collective. And I can see this could actually be part of this whole decision process um, to say, hey, this is technology we trust. This is how we arrive. This is the position of our members in the collective, right? And that's kind of the, almost like a reporting function to go out and we can share that or people can, you know, get, get to that kind of reporting um, from, from their end. That's a very interesting uh, path we, we can explore further here. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited about this. Uh... I can't wait to get back working on it because I'm like backlogged on this other stuff. It's like, ah, there's so much stuff to fix here. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to be able to uh, um, have more use cases and uh, folks who are excited to design against. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Travis. That was a, a great demo and uh, lots of great insights here. Uh, I've written down so many notes here. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Someday I'll, I'll show you guys the, the other um, systems that are kind of built off of this as well. There's, okay. a, there's a couple more that are, are pretty cool too. <laughs> Super. All right. Well, um, should I jump off here? Yeah, you can. Unless anybody else has a question or something? Travis? Um, no? I, I just suggest you water the plant behind your shoulder there, uh, Travis. It's, that I what? Uh, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I, I, I will do so. <laughs> I got my, my outdoor office here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well, that was tremendous. Really appreciated that. That's um, a flash of insight to some amazing potentials. Cool. And it, it totally seems to integrate with the directions that uh, the collective is moving in. So. Well, that's great, and I, I'm excited to hear more about um, about the social ledger and, and that sort of stuff that, that, that you all are working on. Um, so yeah, so keep in touch. Um, I'll let you guys know when the blog launches, because I think that you'll find some of the content to be pretty interesting on there. Um, and and thanks, Jim, for um, for inviting me onto the call. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for coming. You know, I'm still uh, excited. To, you know, I guess for two years we've been hoping to. Uh, do something uh, uh, together, and uh, uh, I think we're getting closer to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing. Actually, time has been going a little bit slower than that. It's only been one year since the Dow. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> a little bit more than that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it feels, feels like longer. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll take care. Um, Great. And feel free to reach out to me. Um, Oh, one more thing with Consider. A lot of it is configurable, but only by me because it's really hacky underneath the surface. Um, so if there's something that you think, oh, it'd be great if we could do this, just ping me. I, you know, I'm happy to help you guys out and, uh, and configure things. So um, don't, be, don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Trevor. Okay. Right, cool. Good right. talking to you. Take care. Alrighty, uh, Jim, do you want to, you're recording there, right? Um, I think let's stop the recording so we have something we can publish in the collective later.